Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, as much a therapy session as live theatre, a psychologist's stark assessment of the award-winning poet Lem Sise read out in front of an audience at London's Royal Court. It was filled with the most intimate of details, but the public reading was exactly what Sise himself wanted, as he heard for the first time the full impact of the abuse he suffered as a child during 18 years in the care system. Our social affairs editor, Jackie Long, joined the audience and just to warn you, her piece does contain distressing testimony. For most of his adult life, he has used alcohol to suppress and to cope with feelings of loneliness, abandonment, fear and powerlessness. A bleak setting and the stark clinical language of a psychologist. This is not a script, not a fiction, but an assessment of the character and personality of the poet and writer Lem Sisse, literally warts and all played out on a stage at the Royal Court Theatre, the most private, made public. The raw, unvarnished text at odds with the richness and rhythm of the poetry which has made his name. Open the dawn in the open sky, the laboratory, open the book, open the challenge with open eyes. His list of successes are long by any measure, an award-winning poet, an MBE, Chancellor of the University of Manchester. But it's perhaps what he was which has defined him, a child in care, a child of the state, a child he says fundamentally damaged by his time in care. Now he wants redress. I'm suing the local authority of uh, Wigan for, uh, for stealing my family for actually taking my entire family away from me. Lem Sisse's mother arrived in Britain from Ethiopia in 1967 with plans to go to college. But pregnant and alone, she was sent to a mother and baby home where she agreed he could be fostered temporarily. Every mother wants a baby like you. Every laugh, your personality. Every look, your clarity. Every word, your stability. Every mother wants a baby like you. At seven months, he was given to a white couple who were told by social workers to consider him their forever child. But forever turned out to last just 11 years. As he hit adolescence with three new children of their own, his foster parents struggled to cope and sent him back into care. He lived in a succession of care homes where he says he was racially abused, beaten, starved of care and bereft of family. I have tattoos all up my arm um, um, of, uh, you know, uh, that I did when I was 14. I have a, a slit wrist that I did when I was 14. You can just see where it is now. 14 years of age. So what it did to me was um, it made me feel a, tr a, tr a, a very deep sense of um, worthlessness and, uh, and really I've spent most of my life since then proving that I'm not somebody that you, you, you could do that to, you know, that I'm not that guy. I didn't do anything wrong. At 18, he's put out of care into a flat with nothing except two pieces of paper exposing the two big lies of his life. After God being imprisoned in the children's homes, they give me my birth certificate, and my birth certificate has a different name on it, Lem Sisse, and it has, and the social worker said, somebody did love you, and he gave me letters from my mother pleading for me back. The words she said were, I want it, Lem to be with his own people in his own country. I don't want him to face discrimination. Uh, and she said that in 1967, 68 actually, because the letter was stamped. He went to find the mother who hadn't been allowed to find him. By then he was 21 and she had a new family of her own. It was difficult, he says, and he talks now of having no family. The reason why, when he has the psychologist's report written as part of his claim against Wigan Council, 
he decides to listen to it on stage. I don't know how these things work, but if they could say negative things about you, unpleasant things about you... Yeah, I think there will be, actually. I think there will be. Uh, I think that's a given. But there's a difference between hearing that Nobody's privately. protecting me, Jackie. There's no... I don't have a family. I don't have somebody who's going to say, my God, don't say that. Nobody's telling me not to do this. I've got no family member who's going, Lem, if you say that, it's going to really break the blah, blah, blah. Wouldn't you appreciate that? I'd do everything for that. And the report is an attempt to decide where all of this has left him. He had problems with drugs as a young boy and gave up drinking three years ago. He finds it difficult to sustain relationships. And even now, lauded as a performer and with two honorary doctorates, afraid to have breakfast in his hotel. On the morning of the appointment with me, he avoided going to breakfast because he feared negative appraisal of him by other people. And because, as he put it, he wanted to spare them feeling uncomfortable having a black man in their environment. In a statement, Wigan Council told us they'd met with Lem Sisse and are trying to find a positive solution. They said it was important to deal fairly and consistently with each claim and that much has changed at the authority in the intervening decades. A standing ovation at the end of a performance where the main character is left with a real diagnosis of post-traumatic stress and avoidant personality disorder, among others. In the foyer, he explains why such a public hearing felt right for him. I couldn't have read this report on my own. Um, I feel like it would have um, hurt me too much. And strangely, having an audience that were there solely to, to look after me as I read this, as I had this report read to me, that felt like home to me, a little bit like home. Among the audience, some who understand through personal experience why he's done this. I mean, I've sat in rooms with 10 people and they've known everything about me and it's not been the greatest experience, but to do it in a theatre with well over 100 people there, it's definitely, yeah, definitely a brave thing. I've carried a lot of shame and, you know, guilt. I thought, oh, I just want to be normal and I want to pass as normal. So it was only when I saw Lem, I thought, oh, God, you don't have to pretend to be normal. Brilliant, you know, so I think it's really empowering and important what he's doing. Lem Sisse is quite clear that this is for him. It is his story. But there's little question that it is also the story of others. We, the children in care, who were supposed to feel ashamed, who were supposed to never talk about our story, who were supposed to be quiet at the dinner parties, who were supposed to not say we were adopted, not say we were brought up in care, not spoil the party. We're not spoiling the party, but we are owning our identity, you know, and owning ourselves and taking pleasure in the openness and honesty of that. Lem Cisse, talking to Jackie Long. I've been getting away with it all